Hi YouTube and welcome to a new educational video. I'm Barnardus, I'm a former professional CSGO and Valorant player and I have a few world record in aim trainers. So today I'll be telling you what I believe to be the best visual settings for aim trainers and this works with any aim trainer. It can be aimweb, Kovacs, aimbeast, whatever. That's what I've used in any of them and I've seen good gains with every single time I've tried changing them for specific scenarios. So first of all, many of you probably, if you've been following me, you've noticed that I use specific color schemes for different kind of scenarios. So for example, when I'm playing any kind of static scenario, for example, six shot here in AimLab, you have probably noticed that I use black on light gray. Now that's very important. Why? So there's a reason why I use these visual settings. So you can see here when I turn around, I've got clear depth, okay? Because it's very easy for me to see the corners of the geometry in the scene. So you can see, for example, that in here, the room is completely visible. So I've got depth. What do I mean when, when I say that I've got depth? It means that when I turn like this, even though my monitor is a 2D screen, I can still perceive the three dimensions in the scene, thanks to the fact that I've got visual cues. So you can see that I can see all the corners in the scene and my brain can then guess where the dots are in 3D space. If the background is completely black I can, and, and I stop seeing the geometry and, and I see the image standing still, it might even be two dimensional, I don't know. I, my brain has no visual cues to tell that it's dots that live in, three, in 3D space. And that's actually a huge difference because it's gonna help you with the quality of your flicks. When I, when I can see around and I can perceive the depth of the scenario, the relative movement of the dots makes more sense to my brain because I can tell that they're flying somewhere in 3D space, probably at this depth, roughly at this depth, thanks to all the rest of the stuff that I can see. But if I use for the background anything that is too dark or in Kovacs you can basically change the roughness and metallicness and stuff like that, that's going to affect the 3D perception, the depth perception. And that's going to make it harder for my flicks to land because I, I don't have any reference point in the 3D scene. So you have to consider that. So that's that's about background color. But what about the dot color? Okay, that's, that's something that I've also thought a lot and experimented a lot with. So let's start with static again. And you might have noticed that I always use black dots, always for static. And why is that? Well, for static, it's very important to be able to quickly perceive everything on your screen through your peripheral vision. So basically what happens when I, when I use black dots is that even if I'm clicking here, with my peripheral vision, I can clearly see all of these dots because there's a very high contrast between the light background and black. So even if I'm clicking here, my brain can quickly perceive all of this and I can already guess what kind of movement it's gonna take for me to reach them because I can clearly see them with my peripheral vision. Now look, if I go on a, on a lighter color, for example, yellow on, on light background like this, it's not as immediate, like with this bond, but there's not that high of a contrast, like the gradient of brightness here is not enough for my brain to immediately react with peripheral vision to the fact that it's spawned here. So my flicks are gonna be a little more inaccurate. And there's also one more reason why I dislike using colors that are this bright, and it's ghosting. On most panels I've found, I've, I've tried on at least like five different panels and it's always like that. If I use black for the targets, there's much less ghosting on them. But if I use yellow, there's always some kind of ghosting. Now it's probably, it's probably got something to do with L LCDs and I don't know, TN panels. I don't know, that's not, my, that's not my field, but it's very noticeable. You can test it too. Like if you use yellow dots, you're definitely gonna have more ghosting. And that's very annoying when it comes to movement because you're moving quickly and then you've got ghosting. So what, what happens is that you flick on the target and the micro correction is gonna be slower because it's ghosting. So your brain needs to wait for you to actually stop before you can exactly see where the dot is because when you're about to land on the dot, the ghosting will make it seem like there's like two, two dots or something like that. It's gonna slow down your micro correction. So that's why I tell you to use black dots on gray backgrounds. So since we're in AimLab, I will also show you how to change your background. Um, but I mean, this is specific to different AIM trainers. So you will have to see how you can change it in your AIM trainer. So in here, you can go to custom gray box and you can change the visuals of the gray box. So basically you can, for example, to put the settings exactly the way I use them, you put color mode individual and then you choose the different elements. On main, 
I've got everything to one, which is basically as light as it can get, which ends up being some kind of light gray. The tiling here doesn't change because this affects when you use pattern textures, I will show you later. And reflections, as you can see, this is what I meant before. This would basically be 2D, so you have no depth perception, so I use it to zero. A smoothness doesn't really change too much in this case. You can see it, it slightly changes the corners of stuff. I'll keep it to 0 0.92. You can also change the sky here. I use cloudy blue, all one. Something that is really important here is sunlight. Personally, I don't like having the sun like this because then you have a huge shadow and it doesn't really help. So I use it to zero so that everything is, you know, there's no shadow and it's a bit more linear. The background is a bit more linear. Ambient light, I use this to one. This makes stuff look like the targets look a little more 2D. If you lower it, then the targets start, uh, you know, you start seeing basically some shading on the targets, but I like it like this. I use one everywhere. So just the targets look a bit more 2D, but not the background. So yeah, this is why I use one on ambient light and this is how you change it. So if you want to copy it, you know, just copy those. So this is what I th believe to be the best settings for static. But what about tracking? Now, the, the situation when it comes to tracking scenarios is almost the opposite. So let's say, for example, that I'm playing Sphere Track or maybe you're playing Air Voltaic or Smoothbot in Kovacs, for example. So there's a huge difference there. In this case, for example, you can choose to have, by default, you've got miss and hit colors, okay? You've probably seen, if you've seen me play anything that moves, you will realize that when I'm playing scenarios like this, I actually do use lighter colors. And why is that? Well, for some reason, it makes it a lot easier for me to actually track. It seems that the lighter color, even though there's a little bit of ghosting, um, so for some reason, I find more ghosting on light colors when I'm flicking, but less ghosting when I'm following the dot around. So it's the dot, when you're tracking properly, the dot is not actually moving much in your screen, okay? Because it's staying in the center of your screen, ideally. For some reason, when I use black for that kind of... So let's try, for example, to put head to completely black. In that case, it ju it's just harder for my eyes to track. I don't know why, but when targets are black, it's harder for me to track them. So I rather use green. Now, this is probably personal preference, the color of the target. There's one thing that is not personal preference that I will show you soon, but the color of the target for tracking scenarios, in my opinion, lighter colors are just easier to track. I have no idea why. It's probably got something to do with the eye receptors in your eye, but you know, I've talked to a lot of people, you know, I've been in the aim training community for a lot and it seems to be very common for tracking scenarios to be better with lighter colors. I have no idea why. But there's one thing that I strongly believe to be better, especially in Kovacs, not as much in Aimlab, but the background, when you're playing tracking heavy scenarios, it's much better to have your background, so in this case, gray box have some kind of pattern because it's gonna help since the target is moving something that doesn't happen in static basically when it moves you can see the relative movement of the target compared to the background there's a pattern there's lots of reference points in the background so if you use anything that has a pattern like let's go with default like this okay so you, we've got a pattern and you can change the tiling all of these points are reference points for a brain so if i keep them on for tracking scenarios it actually becomes a lot easier to see how the, the dot is moving. This is more real, like there's already some reference points in this scene, okay? But in Kovacs you've got some scenes that basically have zero reference points on the walls. So a pattern can help having more reference points. But basically it becomes a lot easier to track like this because you've got a lot of reference points. So even when the target is moving, for example, in depth, it's moving away from you. It's easier to tell how it's moving because you don't have just to rely on the relative size on screen of the target but you can see the relative position of the target compared to any reference point that your brain can automatically pick up from the pattern in the background so i believe that to be really the best for tracking now everything that is in between static and tracking so for example target switching scenarios it basically depends if you got speed target switching scenarios like vox vox target switch where the dots are moving very slowly but you're moving quickly then it's closer to static and i prefer using static visuals so black on light gray but if you've got something like keen ts or any kind of scenario like air voltaic where there's more reactivity involved and the stuff is moving faster sorry air voltaic is a tracking scenario i meant uh, keen ts or psalm ts in uh, in kovacs and any kind of similar scenario here i prefer using tracking visuals like the ones i use for air voltaic that actually helps me quite a bit because i mean the tracking part is more important in reactive target switching so scenarios like those so um, that's why i believe these visuals to be the best 
I think you guys should experiment. Also, something that I always say is don't use patterns for static because it's gonna slow down your micro corrections a lot because when you land on target, the background texture is gonna make it harder for your brain to actually see whether you're on target or slightly off. Maybe your brain, at least that's how I feel, my brain kinda sometimes fires like something like, hey, you're on target, just because I maybe I landed on one of the reference points on the pattern. So especially if you've got patterns that have some kinda dots even if they're like way different, it's still gonna trigger you and it's still gonna slow down your micro correction. So personally, I prefer not using patterns when it comes to static scenarios. This also works for grid shot. Now for grid shot, it's a bit different since the targets are so huge, it's almost a 2D scenario and they're kind of close and they're huge. So I've seen people make it work with dark backgrounds and very light colors, which I don't like, not just for the depth perception, but also because it kind of burns my eyes. So in that case, like for large static scenarios, like grid shot i think you can experiment with different color schemes it's not going to change much because grid shot is mostly about speed and you already know where they're going to spawn because they spawn on a grid but for any other kind of static scenario where you've got smaller dots or maybe there's longer flicks like spider shot i still believe that black on light gray is in my opinion the best but i'd like to see if you guys think differently this is why i believe it's the best it doesn't hurt your eyes because it's you've got just a couple black dots and the rest is a very light, nice color. It's easy to tell depth if you set up your visuals so that you actually see geometry and you have depth. And it's a high contrast allows your brain to more easily see the path that you have to follow and you immediately see targets with your peripheral vision. So basically that's why I believe this to be the best part. I know that people disagree and I would like for you guys to tell me in the comments why and if you disagree. So anyway, this is it. I hope it's going to be helpful for you guys and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.